tonight I am going to answer, through my own experience, a question about, well, why do I need a teacher when I'm already established in my career and things are going just great? Why do I need to go back and work with anybody? So in my life, um, I had this amazing person who was my teacher, who made sure that I went to Europe and that gave me the opportunity to have a career because I'd sung everything there was to sing in Denver, Colorado. I wasn't going any place. I was working as a waitress and, you know, singing in a restaurant. So he was my rock and um, he got older and he died. And I found somebody else, this older Italian tenor. Oh God, I adored him too. And he was my rock. I would travel to see him after I left the theater where he was. And he died. So by that time, um, I was singing everywhere and I didn't bother looking for a teacher. I didn't know of anybody that I'd like to work with. So I just worked on my own and I thought things were just great. Because I had a voice that could pretty much do anything I asked it to do, and because I was expressive on stage, I was offered a lot of very, very different roles. Um, who were my guides at that time? <laughs> my agents. <laughs> so, excellent. Uh, I sang everything from Lucia and Traviata to um, Alban Berg's two heroines, Lulu and Marie and Wozzeck. So I was singing from bel canto to um, 12 tone music with Sprechgesang. That means you're partly speaking, partly singing. You can see how those may not always go together so well. But I thought everything was fine because you know, I didn't have any trouble singing anything. I remember the rehearsal. It was a stage orchestra rehearsal. So it was the first uh, rehearsal where the whole company was on stage and the orchestra was there and people were sitting out in the audience. And I was singing Arabella. And the conductor, who was my boss, stopped the orchestra. He looks up and he says, Macris, I don't like the way you're singing this. I thought, thanks. <laughs> but then a lovely American colleague took me aside and said, Cynthia, I don't want to urge you, but let me urge you. Go see my teacher. I go, okay. Two things like that have been said to me within a couple of days. So I went to see his teacher. And that lesson was not fun because she didn't let me do any of my expressive stuff. She went and uh, shock of shocks, uh, my voice was here and there and there and there and there. I couldn't line anything up anymore and I didn't know it. So she knew what she was talking about and I was willing to take it back. Of course, I didn't stop singing. I was getting paid to sing. But I was willing to take my pride back. I got off my high horse of I can do anything and don't talk to me to, okay, show me. And because of that, because of that relationship, I added maybe two decades to my singing career. So that instead of, you know, people saying, well, you know, she used to be good, but you know, it's kind of fizzled out. Um, I kept getting better. And how can that be a bad thing? How can that be a bad thing? And then there's another reason. When you're traveling the world, it's glamorous, it's fun. You see a lot of places. You work with new people all the time. And you're a little bit, you know, bobbling, bobbing on the ocean without any real center. So that center has got to be you. It's got to be your core. You know you. You know your technique you stick with it. So just one example. The first time I sang in Covent Garden, I sang also a new role. I sang uh, Verdi's, uh, the um, female protagonist of Verdi's Nabucco, Abigail. Wonderful role. She's an Amazon, high notes, low notes, scales, and what a personality. Troubled and magnificent. But when she walks on stage, um, she's got low notes. So, and 
on the first rehearsal with the conductor who was conducting my performances, and he was a magnificent conductor. I'd done other performances with him, but he focused on the low notes. And he, I sang Prode Querier, mixed voice. And he, used to wider voices, worked and worked and worked till my voice was so wide and so not part of my voice that, you know, my first couple performances were okay. And then I went back and worked the role again with my teacher, and she took me back to where I'd been before I got the help. I came back and sang again, and after the performance, the conductor said, wow, you were so much better tonight. And I thought, yeah, exactly. So that was a lesson. If I hadn't had my teacher, I could have gotten so far off track just with that one little help, and he did mean to help. He did mean to help. And because you're in the public eye, there will always be people who have an opinion about what you do. And not everybody is going to listen to you and go, oh, that's just perfection. I wouldn't change a thing. And you know, there will be these colleagues, mostly well-meaning, some not, who will take you aside and say, you know, the way you do this, yeah, bad. You should do it this way. So you came in fresh from your teacher with this nice bag of tools of things that you understand extremely well that always work for you. And then you toss it aside and you just grab this, you know, paper bag and start tossing in random tips. And that's not a technique. So to keep singing a long time and to keep singing well, it's my strong point of view that it's good to have somebody in your corner who understands your voice, who knows your voice, who has your back, who wants you to do well. And somebody you can always turn to. That's really, um, in the storm of everything you're doing, that's the solid point. So that's my opinion about why you should find someone you trust who will always be there for you and to whom you can always go back and start working and make sure that things are still okay. So I hope you enjoyed that and I'll talk to you tomorrow.